this um, this call with a small intentions and instructions. Um, and that will be all Genesis. This is the dynamic that we usually start the meetings with. And it's basically what is your intention for this call and expectations that you may have and um, distractions, anything that probably it's on your radar that affects or could affect you during the call. So I will pass it to Libby to start the intentions and distractions. I'm excited to be here, my first communitas call. And yeah, my intentions are mostly to observe and collaborate um, as I can. And my distraction, not so much a distraction, but I have another meeting in half an hour, so I'll have to leave in the middle. And I'll pass to LBS. Hey. Hello, everybody. Uh, LBS, they, them pronouns. Um, today, my intention for being here is just to provide whatever, you know, expertise or like ideas I have uh, that I can share and feedback on like how things have been experienced so far uh, coming into this group. And as far as distractions go, um, I'm in my like go mode hypomania phase. So I just have like a lot of energy and I'm also eating breakfast. So trying to like be nice and gentle and not take up all the air in the space so that I enter. <laughs> Uh, I'll pass it to Tam. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, intentions are, uh, well, it seems like we got some really meaty things to, to, uh, talk about today. So it's like to get my knife and fork and have some delicious meal here tonight and distractions. I don't really have so many, so, um, yeah, I'm good. I don't know who to pass to. I'll pass back to you, Eduardo, to pass it on. How about you, Aloysius? Intentions and instructions. If you are talking, we cannot hear you. So I will pass it on to MS for intentions and instructions. Hey everyone, can you hear me okay? Cool. I have a protein shake right now and I started shaking it and it spilled everywhere. So my intention is to clean up that protein shake. Now I, uh, I, I think my biggest intention right now is actually to not necessarily have a specific one, but keep being in sponge mode right now to see where the conversation goes and hopefully provide value if I can. Uh, and I will pass it back, uh, Eduardo, to you just because I was a couple minutes late too. Thank you. Um, good luck with the milkshake, with the protein shake. Uh, I pass it on to Gideon. Hey everyone. Um, let's see, my intentions, well, one thing I'd like to get out of this call is I'd like to get a little bit more feedback and direction on that document that I shared on, on the server, the Discord server. Um, I think that's my main thing. Um, and my distractions are, I, I'm, I'm really starting to dig into the Discord server and I, I'm just blown away by all the stuff that is flowing through this community. It really is, is pretty amazing. So that's kind of like, it's like a fire hose. Um, I will pass it on to, let's see, who hasn't gone? I don't, I'm, don't want to butcher your name. Is it Iken? I, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry, but Iken Neodigwe? That's all right. My name is Iken. It's Tono. Yeah, I'm from Africa, Nigeria, precisely. Um, so Tam mention of this while we're having a sprint meeting and then I wanted to come around and of course and understand what happens and um see what more I could take out of this call and also to meet you amazing people. I pass to Yese. Hi. <laughs> well um I think I, I had a, uh, an in, a connection problem, so I, I understand that you are uh, speaking about intentions and distractions. Is that what what we are discussing right now? <laughs> Sorry. Correct. Yes. Okay. Well, my, my intention here is to understand what uh, have you done so far uh, regarding to the Discord uh, onboarding process. And 
my distraction is uh, that I'm, I'm feeling a little bit uh, sick because I, I think I, I got COVID. So uh, that would be my, my distraction. Uh, I pass it to, I don't know, who, who else because I, I, I had this afraid. problem with like, the connection. So no next worries. one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, get, get better. Um, I will pass it on to Nate. You're the last one. Thank you, Eduardo. Um, yes, my intentions are just to kind of listen in today. Um, just want to catch up on everything and uh, make sure, you know, that there's not anywhere I can contribute to and see how I can get the community house up and rolling. So looking forward to it. Uh, distractions are currently, I'm eating some breakfast right now. So yeah. That's I'll pass it back to you, Eduardo. Yeah. Half our call is having uh, some kind of meal. <laughs> so That's right. Profit on that. Um, so we will start with uh, something easy, and the starting point of our onboarding journey, uh, which is Vi Vi V Bot. That him, uh, I was on the impression that you had a sync with him. Uh, he sing. Oh, here, here it is. Sorry, I thought he was not going to be present. So um, I don't know if you or Vi want to sort of feed everyone on uh, the last update that you guys had. Sorry to put you on the stop by, uh, but yeah. So if you can or want to share a little bit of the onboarding, but. All right, so currently we have this workflow where uh, I'm not sure if everyone in the call has seen it. Uh, do we want, uh, should I demonstrate it or should I drop a link in the, uh, in a text channel with a video to that, but uh, uh, to get everyone on the same page, but like uh, the initial workflow is that someone enters the server, they fill the rule, uh, they accept the rules which are given by Discord's rule screen, and after that, they, they're they locked in this one channel called verification. It's uh, actually uh, if you can yeah. just do the, the screen share if you want to just walk through, if it's possible for you to do now, it's probably worth visualizing it. I mean, seeing it. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just need two minutes to set it up, man. Yeah. Okay. Vi and I also took screen, screenshots, and that's what we dropped yeah. in the mirror board. But it's actually nice just to see it in the flow versus, you know, stochastic. So on the my screen, you can see in the meantime the screenshots. I will zoom in because it doesn't get red. Um, here you go. My computer got slow. Okay, so uh, on this journey, this is a little bit of, sorry, my computer, it's really slow now for some reason. Um, so basically this is the message. This is the process when arriving to the new, um, to the new bot. So it, it's a very simple, kind of bot, it says, welcome to ETC. In order to verify, you need to answer uh, a few questions. Sorry about that. Um, and then it asks you to uh, sort of check the terms and the terms of conditions. You press submit. And then uh, once you do that, it says click here to verify. And it prompts you a question, which is here, are you a bot? And once you do that, uh, it it gives you a few more steps, which is validating you, and then it says you're in. So that part, I think it's pretty much very simple. It's basically a, a bot that you have to answer the question when, uh, in a small caption, whether you're a bot or not, uh, that it's better than a CAPTCHA. That was the impression that we were having, that having a CAPTCHA could be confusing, it could be all this kind of stuff. So we went for this kind of bot. And then uh, it seems it seems that it works. Uh, I have seen it in the video and it's pretty good. Uh, the question comes a little bit of what we do afterwards. Um, I don't know, Tam, if you want to fill in into that part or you, there's something else to explain on this bot, in this part of the bot. Um, no, it's pretty straightforward. The, the big difference is that the way to prove that you're not a robot is to answer the question, are you a robot, and select the no in the drop down. So it's super simple. It's a little easier than the CAPTCHA. 
Um, and um, the also, yeah. And then after this, yeah, what happens next, right? Like that was, that was the question. That, those were the questions. The welcome DM or the survey um, were really, the survey turns out to be really, really nice actually, uh, to see sort of the the reasons people join the server. I feel like that's going to make Communitas so strong because you know who you're reaching out to and what they already are there for before uh, before you even start. It might even be a way of good of pairing with the right onboarding coordinator, you know. Uh, so it's I feel like that survey, I, I thought that we could relook at those survey questions because right now we have two. How would you like to be addressed and what brought you to the TEC? I thought we could keep something short, but have a, a review over those, you know, what are the good kinds of survey questions that we might want? Um, you know, it should probably be uh, just a few questions. And there's a Zen Hub issue open for this. Um, and then um, what happens next? Well, this is where I would go back to Gideon's um, audit and just be like, that's what we do. <laughs> we do everything that he put in there because it's so well thought through. I mean, I really liked a lot of the, the these changes that I didn't comment much in it. There was it was so clearly what we would want to how we would want to have things organized. I did add in this Miro board a little bit to the right uh, a Discord inspiration board. Just sort of as I was looking at Gideon's, um, as I was looking at Gideon's, you know, one of the things is like I really liked how Bankless had. And maybe I'll share this. If you, yeah, if you go to the right, you know, they have like. Uh, Gideon mentioned about having things optimized for either people who use it a lot or people who don't. And the conversation with you, Eduardo, was sort of like, it makes sense that people who will come will just, you know, not look at those things. But if you're new to a server, like this, this idea of like welcome is level one really appealed to me visually. And then general was level one. And then, it, you know, they, they have a lot of things that seem to really just be very clear. We do have our welcome information on the top two. Um, and here one hive does as well. But I actually saw that like this, like just saying, telling people what levels are is probably something we can adopt in a, in a really, um, you know, in a way for people to find out where they want to start. So I think I'm that wondering. Uh, I'm wondering instead instead of keeping them numerical, could we like uh, choose something else? Because I think numerically, like I think it creates this uh, pseudo pivot dynamic where it's like you are at this level or something. Maybe we could have some. Maybe we could put some thought pro process behind naming things and uh, and yeah. Uh, I set up the demo, but I can't present my screen right now because uh, my alternate discord account is logging in uh, would anyone be interested in doing it you just need to enter the server i can send you this link for it in dms if anyone would be interested in that yeah i wanna try sure and i think gideon raised his hand too yeah if i read that right yeah so um, there is that part, and so basically, I put out I put out here some questions. Um, basically, the validation comes before everything. Like validation cannot be uh, welcoming cannot be cannot happen if you are not validated on the server. So that's one of the principles of this bot. Um, because if you access to the bankless DAO, they have a welcoming page like a sort of a welcoming landing page. And from that point on, they take you to a journey and it takes like oh, two, five or four steps until you have full access to their server. Um, so, because they they seek validation after welcoming in, in and they have a, this, a different kind of setting for that. Uh, the second question I ask here, the first question that I ask here is, uh, what do we do next? Um, there are two options. One is, for example, the questions that people get sent, the two questions that uh, Tam mentioned. And the other option is the screenshot that I have here on the screen, which is basically uh, picking options. Um, we provide options to people, A, B, C, D, and based on that, they respond. And based on, it could be, and this is taken from, um, this is taken from, I think, also Bankless intro welcome page, which is they give you an option to either you are a contributor you uh, are looking for frequently asked questions or information. You are looking to uh, just read or educate yourself, or you are looking for a fourth option. 
So these four options uh, are sort of easy and people doesn't have to think too much because we can uh, we can do a little analysis of the people that has arrived to the server and understand that most of the people are looking either to contribute, either to learn, uh, either they come by referral of someone and they just are hanging around or um, they are joining because of any other reason or they are looking for information. So those uh, four options, this is another option that could be uh, behind it. Um, if not, if you don't want the questions, uh, which is the options that Tam mentioned. So I would like to know, um, there were some limitations to both of those options regarding the bot that gets sent. Um, so by, I don't know if you have the capacity to explain us a little bit of what will be advantages. We were thinking on once you do the validation, then immediately you get a message that will sort of allows you to follow a path, if that makes sense. So uh, mainly these buttons aren't going to be like buttons that can redirect to a link or to a channel. Essentially, what would happen is someone presses a button and they get a text prompt that tells them something. So I think uh, initially what Bank has is a welcome screen with like where they have written for uh, FAQs. You just click on it and go to the uh, FA, hashtag FAQ channel. So if we want that particular functionality, then this wouldn't be the tool to use. But then the issue is if we use a welcome screen like Bankless does, then we'd have to remove the whole verification workflow thing. Because then like uh, for showing them, the, giving them a preview of those uh, channels uh, initially when they enter the server, uh, you need to give them the permission to view the channels instead of locking them in the verification channel. Uh, I hope that explains it. <laughs> Yes, it does. Um, so these are the a little bit of the options that we have. Um, I would go after the um, these four options, the A, B, C, D. I call it the A, B, C, D because it's the easiest way to explain it. I will go for the A, B, C, D because then we can sort of um, send tailor information that it's automatic automatically sent. And then we can do a follow-up if needed. But uh, this, is, this is a more generic option. Um, rather than less human. Yes, Tim. I have a question. So this would be um, after you've signed the terms and conditions and you've landed in the server, you get a bot and the bot gives you this, these four options to choose from. And then if I select one of the options, I get a DM. You get a text message. Okay. Like... I get what? Um... Um, I don't understand. Sorry, you get a text message. You get a message like uh, the one in the bot that says validation, validated the same thing, according to your answer. So if someone asks for contributions, we can immediately send them, uh, if they pick, click the option of, of contributions, we can send them the options of how to contribute. But it will be a very generic kind of answer tailored to one of these ABCD options. So I'd like to uh, clarify that a little bit. You enter the server, you fill the rules, uh, you accept the rules by checking mark on there, and then you fill the verification things. You answer the question that are you a bot, you say no. After that, you get access to the server. Now here we can do two things. Either the next message that gets sent to them has this menu where they could choose, like they have the options to choose uh, where next to go. Or we just create a Discord channel that create that has this uh, ha has these options running over there, so that it that channel would basically become the central uh, place for everyone to go and find information about the TC. Uh, that can also be an option, like, or we can do both. Whatever seems more. Uh, more manageable and can uh, navigable. Yeah, for the instances of the landing page or, or the landing channel, I will go for it because it will be public. So in a matter, everyone can sort of um, can answer and it, it could be more community driven than a private message. Uh, Jess, LD? Yeah. It's an appropriate time for me to like zoom out just a little bit or are there more like specifics that want to get talked about? 
Okay, cool. Um, yeah, just like an observation that I'm having while I'm like listening to this and seeing these like very cool, very nice that it's like kind of laid out this way. And kind of regardless of how it happens, it looks like this ABCD is trying to identify like what are the newcomer profiles? You know, what are the most common types of newcomers that come to this space and what do they want? Why are they here? It sounds like maybe there's two that have been identified so far. The I want to contribute, like I'm here because I know what this is about and like I'm interested in looking at the working groups and finding a person and like getting connected. And then there's the like, I'm curious, like what's going on here? I don't know if I quite want to like touch it yet. I just want to like know more about it. Um, and it might be that there are like more, you know, like in source cred, we have a like, yeah, I want to be using your product, um, like user profile as well. Um, and I think like a helpful, you know, thing to do is to kind of flesh out like what are these user profiles or these newcomer profiles and say like, cool, this is what this person needs. This is what that person needs when they come into the space. And that can be your A, B, C, D. Uh, and then next is to kind of ask like, what does it look like when those newcomers are fully engaged? What does it mean to be like a fully engaged present? Like you're, you feel like you're nailing it as a newcomer. Uh, and that can be like supports my ability to fail actively and like learn new things and get feedback quickly. Um, and then it's just kind of a question of how do you go from I know nothing to I'm a fully engaged uh, newcomer. Those are just some thoughts that have been rolling around for me. Check. Jess Levy, thank you. Yeah, resonating on that, I, I was, um, I went through that process from Gitcoin of uh, filling up their form. I don't know if anyone did that, but I thought it was really cool the shape they gave, like the direction to it that was assuming that you wanted to contribute. Like if you were filling that form is because you want to be a contributor. So one I always like this apologizing for learning or for observing yourself. In fact, um, you stole my thunder. I had this conversation just today with Params because um, they were requesting on the Params call yesterday. They had a session, the session they usually have, and they were requesting uh, help. Um, I was randomly online in Discord and I was talking to them like, hey, why don't we, and this could be for other working groups, why don't we a target um, a contributor tasks that's like first level contributor tasks that it's just attending one of these calls that are more practical and trying to provide feedback to uh, for these teams. In the meantime, you learn because you learn about uh, what Params is doing at the same time.
two, one. There we go. So what we're gonna do is to probably um, lay out these questions. That will be the next step for us. Um, this could be the A, B, C, D, or it could be uh, more questions. Yes, Sam. Yeah, I, I, you know, what LBS said also really resonated for me. Like profile, I think that's actually a really nice way. Um, maybe maybe the, the questions lead to discovering the profile type, but I think it's really f for maybe of the more common paths and people can self-identify on how they want to engage in the TBC server. I, I heard it like that too. I'm sorry, I feel maybe I'm dopey about this, but so <laughs> this is a bot and it's a DM. It's not like when I join in the channel, it's a bot in the channel. It's a bot in my DM and then I click on the button and I see here's the answer that here's the answer you get when you click on that button. Can I click on all the buttons and see all the answers? Um, uh, so I ha I, ha I had a confusion regarding what we want. So uh, I I'll just uh, highlight the process that I was having in mind is that we have three different systems. One is for verification. Second one is a guide. And the third one is the survey. So initially when you enter the server, uh, you get met by the verification, uh, the verification part. After you're done with verification, uh, two things happen. Uh, you get access to the server and the survey bot DMs you a survey with the questions. And it gives you a message where you could say, I want to fill this survey and you can fill the survey. Uh, and you know, selecting things from a drop down menu, then that won't be used. 
I um I get a little lost when we're talking about things, but we're not seeing them. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else suffers. I don't know if you have struggles with your uh, sound, Gideon. Let me know. You can run that properly. Um, yeah, there are, I don't know if you're seeing in the chat, but um, there are a number of... I changed the server we're using, uh, the where this call gets up, so maybe that may fix things. Thanks, bye. Now it should work for everyone. Um, do you want to try, Gideon, explain a little bit of the, of the audit? Yes, sorry about that. I just, I couldn't, I, I think I lost uh, probably about 10 minutes of the conversation. So I'm sorry, I, there were some really interesting comments that were happening, happening there. Um, yeah, so I, I just, um, the, the thing that um, occurred to me was, and actually you know, what LB said really resonated with me as well, which is um, I kept trying to put myself into the mindset of somebody landing here for the first time. And I kept trying to figure out who are these people um, and I think that that's really something that will be helpful for us is just um, what is not necessarily the role that somebody's going to eventually get to, but what is the um, mindset of somebody right when they land? Um, and um, so I was trying to kind of keep that, um, that mindset in
No. We don't have like a fixed channel that people can always go back to and sort of always, if they are looking for links, they don't have to dwell into the different voice channels or text channels looking for answers. So they can go just to the about DEC. Hello, Gideon. Hi. Um, I don't know what to do here. Um, no, it's okay. I, I, yeah, I, I, uh, it, it looks like there's maybe just three or four of us that this is happening to right now. Um, it, is a, it is a Discord server. Yeah. Okay. I was also having these issues. I wasn't able to record some parts of the calls. I'm sorry. I uh, keep yeah. getting... Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not your Discord. It's the Discord in general who is not active properly. So as I was saying, um, yeah, it is true that we don't have an about the, we don't have an about the EC, um, sort of page. Um, we have pin message, but pin, pin message doesn't get a lot of visibility because unless you know that's a pin button, people don't go to the pin messages. So I don't know. I felt that that was an extremely good point from the audit. Um, and that's something I will suggest to work on um, and open an issue for eventually, or not right now. Um, and I think this about TEC could be also tied or yeah, tied to the bot that uh, the survey bot or something like that. So we could sort of have all the information in the same uh, place if it is not too crowded. Uh, so basically Gideon, what um down the line he expressed a lot of other interesting stuff i don't know i don't know if it, your um sound works now gideon and you want to briefly explain before it gets cut again uh but if you if you want to try give it a go sure yeah um i think that i'll just say that the document is pretty self-explanatory once you get down through it um the big questions that i had were are kind of like upfront questions but they're, they're more macro questions. Um, and like LB was kind of getting at some of these, which is, you know, who are the people when they come in? Um, who, who are the, how do we, how do we profile people and, and make them feel welcome? I'm, I was less focused on trying to sort people down the road, you know, what, what they're eventually going to do. I was, I was really thinking more like when they land, how do we welcome them? In a, in a way that feels welcoming and custom for them, and so um, so I like the the A B C D um, thing. I think that that could be there could be some really cool things that we could do for that. Um, my my one question I just want to put out to the group right off the bat is: um, Do we think it's a good idea to um, optimize for optimize the layout of the server for newcomers? In other words, you know, is, is that is that a good bet? My sense is yes, but I think that's a big assumption. Yes. In my opinion, yes. Yeah, I think this kind of gets to the question of like, what does this community want? If your goal is to like have lots of like, make this such an accessible space that like anybody can join it, and it's like, you know, cool, put the effort into making your Discord server like extremely newcomer friendly as soon as somebody shows up. If the goal is like, yeah, we want to be selectively accessible because we only want like these kinds of people showing up in this space or these kinds of people like participating in things. Uh, that's just like another question, you know, it's like, what does the community want uh, in regards to newcomers? And then kind of build around that. Check. Yeah, I'll throw my weight behind that too. I really, um, people who use it a lot don't see things anymore. Like I don't see half of the things I scroll past when I'm going to a channel. <laughs> like We know where it is. We know how to get there. Uh, whereas when you're new, it's really confusing. So like baby steps, take you by the hands, you know, like really gently bring you closer into the server, I think is the way to optimize. It was a great question. And I, I really think that you nailed it with with that question yeah. and the answers, like we optimize it for people who are who are landing there for the first time. And the next thing I really like from your audit, Gideon, it's the community categorization. Um, then that's this part that is on the screen, uh, just to it sort of kind of made me visualize the Discord in a different way. Uh, we just have mm -hmm. the information that it's for newcomers, and the rest is community. 
you know, and that's 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 true. Like, um, and that for me, I really, I really like that. Um, we will probably have to think out a little bit if there is something that we are missing out. But yeah, I, you were trying to say something, Gideon. Sorry. Yeah, no, I just think um, what was happening for me when I was um, writing this was that it was raising all of these questions that are really before any of this, you know, questions like, well, this one question of who are we optimizing for? And it seems like there's pretty good agreement on that. Um, but then there are all these questions that we don't know the answers to quite yet. Um, like, who are these people? Like, where are they coming from? What are the assumptions that they're, you know, what are their experience that they're bringing in with them? All of these kinds of things that um, right now we're going to just have to guess at. And over time, they'll become more clear, right? We'll have a better idea. And so in a way, this is kind of like the minimum viable welcome. You know, like how do we, how do, we do this in a way that's as graceful as possible, given that we don't know that much about them yet? And um, so, and so I, I guess last thing I'll say on that is just, I think that there's like a whole bunch of questions that this group will probably get into down the road about where are we doing outreach, um, you know, what kinds of people are we really trying to attract and, and what kinds of people are we, eh, you know, it's like, it'd be nice, but we don't have to get those people. And so I think, um, and this kind of goes to the thing that LB was saying about the, the welcomeness and, and my sense just from, you know, the last couple of months of kind of like circling around is that there's a very welcoming um, culture here. And so, um, you know, we probably want to be as open as possible and um and have that reflected in here and so just being um thoughtful i like the um i'm just here like maybe just as the basic beginning it is i'm just checking it out or i know i want to contribute i mean i like that resonated for me lb too nice uh i want to give space for anyone else in the call um kene joshua or Janice, if you want to provide feedback if you have any question regarding this if you uh, feel it that it's confusing. Uh, if you need any clarification, feel free to jump in. Uh, um, I will count to five uh, if anyone wants to jump in. Five, four, three. Yes, Joshua. You are unmuted, but we cannot hear you. Um, Genesi? Okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I will say that this is amazing work. <laughs> uh, so, congratulations. I think uh, that this audit uh, it was necessary, and I think uh, it is something that surely we can emulate for the Comstock Discord too. Uh, <laughs> Joshua, we can hear the back now. Can you try? Okay. You can hear me now. Yes. Okay. Yes, so, um, you okay. mentioned. And which kind of people do we do you guys want or let me let me let me, let me use we do we want to have in the TEC and who are they? So I wanted to ask how um do you plan on getting information pertaining to the kind of people without being too intrusive? So the first approach that we did um was to when when people log in or enter the server, there is a there is a bot who sends a question. And the question provides a variety of answers. Uh, you don't you you don't have to choose one, but the idea is like, hey, welcome. Um, we we accept everyone. You everyone is welcome. It doesn't matter if you're looking for education. It's if you're a talking engineer, if you're just seeking for uh, education, if you're seeking for information. So we we present this soft approach to people, and actually the answers people provided very specific answers most of the time. So uh, by itself, it seems that the people, it seems, this is an assumption, but it seems that the people who at least answered the questions of the bot had sort of a very clear understanding of what they, why they arrived here. Um, they just needed to be guided. We are talking about a niche community. So it's, it's just by itself, the name, it's, it filters a lot of people, I believe. Um, so yeah, that's my two cents on that. So if we keep moving on to the agenda, um, 
And if any, if everyone can praise also Gideon for this. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, Dan. I just want to say before we move off from this, um, I think we can start executing against this, at least sort of like take a look, come up with the execution plan, having, I mean, just the simple things like which of these we need content for, uh, and then putting the content together, what the uh, permissions are for each of these, um, and then start to sort of draft out what it will look like in the end, at least based on which ones we can execute and not. I mean, I'd love to say this is something we can actually implement if not uh, this week, then in the next sprint, which will start on Friday. Um, the, also the idea of like the level. For one, and something's like deep in the working groups and some way to vis visual, to, to have a visual cue for that element as well. So maybe it's um, it's You do our and to, to implement it. So I'll, I'll drop this in a bit of our agenda and pass back to you, Eduardo. Thank you. Um, so besides the Gideon, uh, Gideon audit, um, So if we go to orientation data, um, I don't know, guys, if you can see it, it'll be, it'll be, can you see it? Let me go I just back got to... kicked out and like joined again. I can see your Discord. Yes. Okay, then it's good. Orientation data, it's on top. Where did it go? Wait, give me a moment. Where did it go? <laughs> So what I did is that I created um, a spreadsheet with the reasons of the people of why they join. Uh, the reason they explained why they join, uh, the date of the arrival and the contact date, and basically mm, their Discord name. So basically, my goal with this is to, until we deploy the, the bot, to not lose people who enter the server, because I feel that we are missing out people who show interest by at least filling the form. So we should we should reach them out. Um, and this, I guess, it's a manual labor for now. So we will need. It could be a nice uh, community's first kind of outreach work to sort of manage these people until we get deployed. So we get sort of uh, a momentum on people that can help as coordinators, as time mentioned. So what I did here uh, is that I created. I will share the link on, on, on the agenda, but I created basically um, a mock-up of a message of uh, a mock-up of a message that can be sent that you just, just copy and paste and adapt it to you. And then uh, a basic um, HackMD information that it's now also sendable to everyone. That, that, that it's an, sort of a worked out version of, um, Sugar's pin message, uh, a little bit more improved in some senses. So basically, um, I'm wondering if anyone on this call would like to sort of help on this 
uh, small outreach to people who has filled the form. So we can start sort of working out and not let not letting people lose just because we don't send, we don't welcome them. Does that make any sense, Tam? <laughs> I'm just looking at your screen. So the 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 suggestion is to do a outreach a, a personal outreach to the people who have recently joined and filled out the survey. Correct. That's a suggestion. Uh, and the people who will arrive until we get the deployment of the of the bot in a way that sort of we can practice also by the time that the bot uh, gets deployed, we already know more or less how to navigate. That's yeah, just... I can, I can, I mean, I'll chip into some as well. I think it's really nice when people get a welcome message from somebody in the TEC. I think it feels really nice. So I'd be happy to help with that too. But I think it'd be great for, uh, yeah, there would be a few people who, uh, who can do it too. I think that could be really helpful. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't want to put anyone on the spot. So everyone who wants to sort of help doing this soft outreach to people, who wants to do this soft outreach to people, it's more than welcome to join. Um, and that leads to, yes, the the roles. You, you were going to talk about the, um, what you just said, uh, Tam. The, oh, oh, yeah, no, we, we have, I mean, I think we can think about this as, as time goes, goes by, but um, we have a short list of people who are co uh, onboarding coordinators, orientation coordinators right now. That's a role in the TEC. And as we're thinking about this onboarding journey, I mean, I think we can add to that as well. Anyone who would like to be considered uh, a person that people can ask questions to in the TEC. But also I think we could consider maybe there are other roles that can help be signposts in a way for new people. Um, I don't know if it, I, I think it's like, I, I think like the balance is not having it so granular that then you're just constantly updating the roles because <laughs> there's so much fluidity and things change so much. Uh, but I just want to sort of throw out the idea that it's another way for people to find what they're looking for in um, in our Discord server. Yes, um, and in the same way that Aloysius was sort of shaking also the channels in, in orientation in general, um, I think there could be a few uh, could have dedicated efforts uh, of just like in orientation people, when people join the server, just to welcome them, just, uh, hey, welcome to the server, any kind of simple message that's public. And then the people who will do the soft outreach, which is a little more dedicated. And it, would, it could depend on the bandwidth of everyone. So we can sort of have these two more generic, more generic, and another one that is soft, uh, is, is soft outreach. Uh, but it will depend on everyone's kind of, um, yeah, time frame. Yeah, that's my suggestion. Yes, Elby. Yeah, I think um, like this is something that we're really thinking about in source cred too. Like it could be really helpful to, and maybe that's not needed right now. Maybe it is just really easy for people to step up and fill in uh, as feels appropriate to them. But eventually it might be nice to create a like specified team with like defined membership of like, yeah, you're a welcomer, you know, or, or whatever, like term you want to use. Um, and that's like a group of people who have access to like a short list of like really powerful resources, you know, maybe like, you know, level one, uh, or whatever is like, yeah, you're just looking at the discord channels in like the, you know, first section that all the newcomers are always going to be hanging out in. And just one of your jobs is you're just kind of always hanging out there and like poking around and like saying hello. And then you can kind of like, you know, move into more expertise as you've been doing that for a while and then start like reaching out to people with like, you know, you, that was a really beautiful, like canned response full of resources and links and like hellos that like, you know, maybe those people have access to that and can kind of like personalize it um, before they send it out. And that would be like a really easy way to do that. And then just, you know, I've found in other spaces I've been in when it's just kind of like, yeah, whoever wants to do it, do it. That can be really beautiful, but it also like, especially as things get bigger and bigger and bigger, it's like, 
wait, were you responsible for that? I, nobody even talked to this person, you know, like, I don't really want to do that anymore, you know, but I didn't tell anybody that, you know, whatever it is, it'd be really helpful to have like defined membership uh, that is still like capable of like moving in and out of check. Perfect. Um, the last thing is that then I would do sync with Vi to create a time for that he's available for to do a workshop on the text and all these processes for the bot and the rest of this kind of little journey that we have defined today a little bit. So I will share that on the community's uh, um, text channel in case anyone else wants to join and contribute and be part of this little workshop. Probably will be this week um, since we, we have a momentum going as Tang mentioned. Uh, but we are on top of the hour. I don't know, Tam, if you want to say something else. No, perfect. No, other than like there's there's this Zen Hub issue now, if somebody wants to take it to work on the survey and welcome message, although I think that's maybe what you are proposing as the workshop. Okay. Yes. Well, then maybe yeah. you can keep that up to date so that everyone who's not in the workshop can also see what's going on and, and how it's updating. Perfect. And um, for the implementation of the audit, I'm opening another issue. I'm just still typing, but it, I'll drop it in the agenda so everyone can see it. Perfect. Um, and um, Ekene and Janacy, thank you so much. I hope this call was not chaotic and confusing for you. And if you need any other information, sync or whatever, you can text me, you know where I am. And um, thank you so much for everyone who stayed, even if the Discord server didn't want you to stay. And look forward to see you this week. Take care and thank you so much. Thanks, Eduardo. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye. Thanks. Thanks.